I'd like to turn now to Dr. Raghavan Sitarama. I, he is the CEO of Doha Bank in Qatar, and he's the, the group CEO of Doha Bank. And it's one of the largest commercial banks in Qatar. In 2015, the business magazine Forbes ranked uh, Mr. Sitarama is sixth in the, the Forbes top Indian leaders in the Arab world. And he has uh, impressed us greatly, particularly in the Trilateral Global Summit uh, edition one, with his uh, amazingly insightful and wise comprehensive speech without notes, uh, full of statistics and insight into to global trade and uh, financial services. We look forward to, to hearing your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for your generous introduction. What a joy and what a brilliant combination of people who have converged on one substance. Trade is not merchandise or service, it's people. It's people. We live in an interconnected, interdependent world. The crisis, there are positive sides of it. The tragedy is human tragedy. We had 177 million people impacted and we lost nearly 3.8 million people. We accept. But the governance comes out of it. It's not confined to economics alone. Economics, we could fix it. We could improve the debt servicing capacity. We could increase the liquidity. We can make sure business continuity is on. We could clearly see this environmental governance is, again, converging to be a better prospects to create a better world in terms of global warming and climate change. That's the beauty of this positive side of the pandemic. It also tells you a clear message back to basics. All values are not absolute. That's what Mr. Marwa was trying to highlight. It is your humanitarian values. That is me when Abdul Basit, two years before, when he converged on a beautiful combination of people and the substance was humanitarian values. There's a beautiful saying by the former president of India. When there is righteousness in your heart, there is beauty in your character. When there is beauty in your character, there is harmony in your home. When there is harmony in your home, there is order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world. That's what the bottom line is all about. If you aim at short term, you're going to cultivate flowers. If you aim at medium term, you're going to cultivate trees. If you aim at eternity, humanity, you build. That's what exactly this crisis. It defied all the logics. It defied caste, creed, religion, race, name it. Nobody is an exception to the crisis. Is it not an opportunity as a defining moment for us to turn it around? Not only we have to create a better world, we need to create better citizenship to this world. That's the message. Strengthening the global economy, we all know there's a contraction of 3.3% last year across the globe, except China, which was doing around 2.3% in positive territory. The rest of the world were under the water. This year, possibly, 6% was originally foreseen, then it was revised downward in, to 5.6%. That's what global growth is all about. Advanced economies are going to move because of the, uh, the positive sides in terms of vaccinations. They may do around 5.4%. And emerging markets, developing economies might do around 6% as against what originally indicated 6.7%. That's not an issue. That's not an issue. How do we create a better world? Merchandise trade, if you look at it, if you last year was a a minimum paltry 5.3%, perhaps it may do even 8%. That will give you peace? No, it will not. What we need to converge is to recognize the opportunity and redefine ourselves in terms of social governance, economic governance, again, human governance, and environmental governance. That's what the message everyone was trying to give, including Paul, the last speaker, sustainable development goals. How do we eradicate extreme poverty? How do we make sure food security comes in? How do you ensure global warming, warming and climate change, increasing sea level, animal extinction? Look at the carbon you know, emission with this society has created. We don't have future for our children and grandchildren. That's what the message everyone is converging on. We, we have to develop a better world, then we have to understand sustainable development goals comes in in prospects. If you understand, you have to build, build humanity, then the whole thing works. The measure, measurable tools are very many. We have all options open, trade or investments, banking or finance can converge and create a momentum in the redefined world. We have solutions which are conventional, which are having a fresh perspective. We will come together. And that's not the point of contention. In terms of trade, developed world and developing world always had contentious issues because we need to believe 
that we live as global citizens. One world, one citizenship, integrate. That's a message. It's not disintegration. Disintegration has created more divisions. That's how East India Company invaded India. Then the result was a reflection of so much divisions within India itself. We have learned lessons. History has given us enormous amount of lessons for us to learn. But what we need is to articulate thoughts. Your thought becomes action. Action becomes habit. Habit becomes character. Character becomes your destiny. That's what we need to understand. How do I make sure gender equality I will bring in, diversity I will bring in? How do I make sure we give in the corporate boardrooms the diversity I bring in? Women participation governance is not an ordinary issue. You have to. First time American history has witnessed a vice president as women. Look at the most advanced country still struggling with diversity. Corporate boardrooms have to come to terms in terms of recognition of the fact we, it is an opportunity for us to build humanity. And that's what the message we have to understand. And again, healthcare, healthcare, we are all recognizing the importance of it. It is not money. Can you create gross happiness? Can you, instead of GDP, can you create gross domestic happiness? Like Bhutan has advocated as a principle centered value. Can we bring in such values? And that's what the message we need to articulate in substance. Then comes global warming and climate change. All are interconnected in, in terms of humanity. I mean, if we have to build this partnership for the entire government of sustainable development goals, which are 17, which Marwa has mentioned, and again, Mr. Paul has mentioned, we need to build the partnership, bring this partnership. Here is the defining moment. Look at the digital governance. Look at the global governance, which were impending in terms of substance. Why? We have divided. The globalized world created income inequality. The haves and have not have become wider. That has created more disparity, more divisions, more haterness. We love. That's what everyone was advocating. Peace and love are coming together. Integrating your mind and heart and is the eternal. And that's what we need to understand. The substance remaining in loving people. That's what spirituality, which was internally drive, not externally alone. Internal drive. Internal drive gives you realization as against education alone. Education gives you civilization. A trade can give you, you know, enormous affluence, but that is not alone. It's not gold medal which I execute myself. It is golden moments can I create for humanity? Can I bring in value systems, bring in a foster appreciation for humanity? Can I make sure? There's a famous Tamil poet said, "Tani mani dona ku vana vilayil jagatiri vodi thiruvo." If there is no food for single individual, I will destroy this world. Bharati, famous. You know, quiet Bharati. That's what exactly we need, need to understand. We need to articulate solutions for humanity. That's where the conviction and character, principle centered peace comes in. Peace is not outside, peace within you, you as an individual. You are the catalyst for the change. And that's where mm -hmm. we need to look at the future generations. We need to build this partnership to create more ethical and moral governance. Why? Thank you so what much. Has what has changed the world? I will finish. Uh, Robin, in a minute. In substance, greed has changed the world. Contentious issues to become how much material I'll be. No. Look at it. Look at objectively making sure, ensuring you have value systems which are second to none. Build this partnership to make sure we love everyone. We like every day becomes interesting. Peace comes in. Trade flows automatically without contentions. And that's what we need to articulate. And Take this pandemic as an opportunity for us to turn around and make sure we will create a better world, better citizenship to this world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. I love your passion. It's wonderful and a wonderful speech. Thank you. Yeah.